Hi, I'm Debbie, and this is The Book Ponder. Thank you for stopping by for another video. Today I wanted to do something a little different for me, although I will admit that I have been heavily inspired by Mel over at Mel's Bookland, who has recently done a couple of videos on cookbooks. You know I love cooking. I've talked about food. I'm pretty much food obsessed. Um, even though I don't have a lot of time to cook uh, lately, I still do love looking at cookbooks. Um, like Mel, I also love checking books out from the library to look at cookbooks. I think it is one of the most brilliant things you can do if you love cookbooks. Um, to keep you from buying cookbooks, to help you find out which cookbooks you really like and will use. I have actually gone and bought several cookbooks after getting them from the library. Um, I just highly recommend that as a sort of strategy if you just like collecting cookbooks like I do. And so... Um, Today what I want to do is five cookbooks that I really enjoy. Uh, these are not ones that I have from the library. These are ones that I own and cook out of. But um, I just thought I would talk to you about them briefly. I, I really at some point would love to do a cooking video. And I've talked about that before where I take sort of a review of one cookbook and show me cooking from that cookbook until I ever get around to that this will have to do for now. So one of the books that I have here is The Home Cook by Alex Granicelli. She is um, well known if you watch Food Network or um, food television. She is a judge. She's also an Iron Chef. Um, she is well known, has several restaurants here in the USA. This is a really good cookbook. I am not normally one for sort of celebrity chef books, but this is just a down-home good cookbook. I tend to like cookbooks that are more home cooking style. Even though I love fufu food when I eat out, I'm not going to cook it at home usually. So, yeah. This one doesn't have a ton of pictures, but it does have some. Um, like, this is her favorite pho if you can see that picture. But all of the recipes are just really sort of, I mean, some of them have a lot of ingredients, but they're nothing fancy. They're just stuff that you would make, you know, from the stuff you have in your fridge. Um, she has a lot of soups. There's a lot, of, a lot of fish and vegetarian restaurants. She's heavily inspired by her Italian roots here. Um, she's got pickled onions, white mushrooms, and spinach. That looks delicious to me. Um, looks very yummy. I haven't made that one though. Um, here she's got salads. And so this, you know, this time of year is a good time of year to buy cookbooks for other people that you know who like to cook. Even if they don't like books so much, there's still a lot of people who like cookbooks. And um, I think this is a good one. I also think it folds really nicely. It lays open well. Like this new style of cookbooks, I have quite a few of them, I think. I don't know here, but this sort of hardback um, binding, whatever kind of binding this is, has replaced sort of the old spiral bound as being one that just, it lays open flat so that you don't have to worry about your pages turning on you or whatever. She has a whole section here on salad for dinner. I like that. So, um, yeah, and she does, you know, it's not one where she has a lot of stories or anything. At the beginning of each recipe, she has like this little blurb of information about where this recipe came from or where she, what she was inspired by or whatever. It's, so it's sort of interesting beyond just, you know, the regular recipe. She has sort of classics like eggplant parmigiana, and then she has sort of a little twist on things like gnocchi, macaroni, and cheese. Um, beef chili, spring minestrone, shrimp toast sandwiches, um, she has a lot of mushroom dishes, sweet potato puree, so there's some basics in here. Then she has like Villa Asobuco, is that how you say it? I'd love to eat that dish, I've never actually cooked it. Um, curry black bass, one of my favorite fish. So anyway, I highly recommend that book. And then this one I've talked about recently, Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat by Samin Nasrat, Samin Nasrat. Um, this book is just really interesting because it's more illustrated than pictures. 
but the majority of the book is really just information about using each of these things, salt, fat, acid, and heat, on learning how to cook. And she covers basics. And so she kind of gives you basic techniques, the principles of using each of those things um, to cook with. And then the second half of the book is recipes. Um, but again, they're sort of malleable, if you will. You know, I think the illustrations in this book, though, are very good. Like this is soup smooth soups. And so she has a lot of different kinds here. Um, it's sort of like guidelines, you know, which I love recipes that are like that, where they kind of tell you how to do something and give you the freedom and creativity to go do it yourself. Um, I'm not sure where the actual recipes start, but you can see that like, I think, let's see, let me see if I can find the beginning of the recipes. Well, this is still kitchen basics and we're more than halfway through the book, right? So that's page 200. I think we start to get into the recipes here. But she has like how to chop parsley. I mean, the illustrations in this book are just fantastic. Um, but she has like Persian-ish rice, um, chicken confit, sauces like herb salsa, things like that, pumpkin pie. Um, I took tons of notes. I made notes about recipes that I've tried and wanted to try. Um, this is just a great, great book. If you especially have a, a cook who aims to improve their game and not just get dinner on the table or somebody who is a reader but also loves food, this is a fantastic um, cookbook for them. I'm going to go with this one next, Fermented Foods at Every Meal. Um, I don't ferment, my, ferment a lot of food as much recently because it requires just a lot of effort for me, but Gardening a lot, I have a lot of fresh produce, and one of the ways I preserve that is by fermenting different things. This is one of my favorite fermenting books because what she does here um, is have sort of one fermented thing that you can make and then show you different recipes, different ways you can incorporate that into your, um, your meals. And so, for example, let me just pull up one here. I think this is a good one here, the fermented carrots. Let me find out. So she has fermented ginger orange carrots. And so she tells you, and this is a fairly easy one, she tells you how to make these carrots. Uh, you ferment them. And then she gives you, so here's the fermented carrots. I hope I'm not giving away all her secrets. Um, and then she gives you different recipes like fruity oatmeal salad, creamy carrot soup. Uh, let's see. Cabbage, apple, carrot, slaw, Thai chicken salad with peanut dressing, triple bean salad, halibut with strawberry, basil, salsa, chopped sesame chicken noodle bowl, apple carrot cooler, which is a drink, and raw carrot cake bars with maple frosting. All of those incorporate the fermented carrots into the recipe. And so I just think it's fascinating um, to think about how one thing like these carrots can go into so many different things and you get the health benefits and the nutrition from the fermented carrots. But she has lots of different things. She has fermented ketchup. Um, she has dried fruit chutney. So if you have somebody who likes to ferment food or likes to drink kombucha or something like that, um, and wants to sort of up their game on the fermented food side. This is a fantastic, and it's not very big, but it's a fantastic, fantastic cookbook. And here I have the next two books are probably my two favorite cookbooks for very, oops, sorry, for very different reasons. The first one is Made in India, and it is by, I can't remember her name, Mira Sodha. I hope that's how you pronounce it. This is one of just my all-time favorite cookbooks. It is Indian food. Even beyond Indian food, it is my favorite cookbook. Um, she has pictures in here. I think the pictures are really good. The pages feel really great. Um, but this is just, I don't even know how to explain how good this cookbook is. She has information about her, her sort of 
roots growing up cooking her family this again is home cooking style um, food it is not just storytelling but sort of like in the beginning of each chapter she'll tell you sort of more about her and her philosophies and where she comes from and sort of the influences on her food and you can see this is like coconut fish curry let me show you the pictures because that's what you care about right the recipes in here I've cooked so many recipes from this book they are all really good I will say I have sort of this theory on cookbooks though that people like this people who write cookbooks like this or Alex or any of the others we all as chefs have our go-to ingredients that you're gonna find in a large majority of the recipes that we make partially because it's what we have easy access to partly because it's what we're familiar with partly because we have developed an affinity for that combination of flavors um, whatever the reason is we have our little go-to things maybe you always use mushrooms maybe somebody else always uses um, bell pepper and onions together whatever it is okay she in this book likes garlic one green chili pepper and uh, lime ginger you know they're in almost every single recipe so I'll say those are not your go-to flavors you know maybe this book isn't for you but her techniques in here are just fantastic she has some basic stuff um, in the back about making non making um, mango lassi making um, what is the cheese paneer I learned how to make paneer from her just fantastic fantastic basic recipes and then she also ups the game a little bit by showing you how to use some of those in different recipes everything I've tried here has been fantastic I learned a lot about the ingredients in Indian food how to purchase them where to purchase them uh, I actually got brave enough to go to a local Indian market where I bought a lot of ingredients that were super cheap come to find out and I met interesting people there like they have this produce section and I just started talking to some of the older women there um, who were shopping about what different herbs were and things so I thought it was a very fun um, experience when I was really into cooking from this book um, I did it over like a couple of months I just cooked like the majority of recipes in here um, I really really love this book so if you have someone who loves Indian food fantastic fantastic book and I also really like this this is a hardback and um, it has kind of a strange like old school book kind of feel I don't know how to explain that to you but that's what it is and then I am not a baker okay I know I do bake out of necessity when I need a pound of brownies or something or a cake or something because you know that dessert need hits all of us at times but I was doing this cookbook club thing where a different cookbook was picked every month we cooked from the cookbook that's how I found the Indian cookbook I just showed you it's also how I found this next cookbook which is a dessert book and it's called Brave Tart iconic American desserts this is fantastic 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 I think it was one of the best cookbooks of last year um, and for good reason she takes desserts that we all grew up loving and she sort of makes them for more wholesome ingredients she teaches you how to sort of replicate flavors that we grew up with that we never even I never even realized I can make um, she has sort of basic things like pumpkin pie and whatever but she has things like homemade pecan sandies which I will say I made and I wasn't as impressed with those her chocolate chip cookies were divine um, she has donuts and things in here um, my brother I know made the Oreo cookies and absolutely love them I know some other people who've made them and love them just basic like yellow cake and stuff that I thought was fantastic she has a muffin recipe in here that's like this she calls it a five minute muffin recipe or something where you can actually make the muffin mix and give it as gifts to people those muffins are the best muffins because they're more like scones they have sort of this scone feel which I love scones I have made those muffins so many times in so many different ways this cookbook is worth it for the muffin recipe alone um, she has Boston cream pie angel food cake uh, fudge I think my European friends would also like this book she uses a lot of European ingredients in some of her recipes 
um, even though they're American desserts. Go figure. Um, she does nutter butters. I mean, I think some of these things, like if you are European, you might not recognize some of these desserts, but if you are American, especially if you grew up when I did in the 70s and 80s, you will most certainly recognize these recipes. Um, she has Fig Newtons, graham crackers, animal crackers. I mean, these are just fantastic, fantastic recipes. Um, trying to see if I can find another pretty picture for you, but anyway. Oh, she, I made her biscuits. I wasn't, the biscuit was sort of shortcakey, but it wasn't, you know, it was okay. That, that probably was one of my lesser favorites. Um, but it tasted like, um, I think she's really good at sort of replicating, like she's figured out how to replicate things that are processed for us that we were used to purchasing processed foods, but then she makes them in a sort of home cooked way that's not processed. And the thing about it though is sometimes she's so good at replicating um, the taste of the processed food that it does taste processed. So like she has a biscuit recipe in here that tastes like canned biscuits to me. I don't like canned biscuits. I eat them when I'm absolutely desperate for a biscuit and too lazy to make them. But you know, canned biscuits just aren't my favorite flavor profile. Her biscuits taste like canned biscuits, which seemed like a total waste to me to make biscuits to taste like canned biscuits. But anyway, I'm dead birdie. So she has fudge. I have not tried her fudge, but um, this is another fantastic book. If you know somebody who did not get this last year, but they love desserts, even if they're not used to cooking desserts, I think her recipes are easy to follow. Um, most of them are super easy to make, at least the ones I made. Um, some of them do require a little bit different ingredients or like these Oreos on the cover. I think, um, excuse me, I think you're supposed to use some kind of embossed rolling pin. I know the group I was in, other people just sort of made designs themselves without buying one. That worked too. So, you know, fantastic, fantastic cookbook. So those are my recommendations. And um, if you have a favorite cookbook, let me know what it is. I'm always on the hunt for a new favorite and I will talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.